up guys? I'm Cassie. I'm Sarah. And this week we're talking about the psycho killings of the raw style butcher Andre Chikatilo. Andre Chikatilo! Andre Chikatilo was born on October 16, 1936 in a village in the heart of rural Ukraine within the USSR. During the 1930s, the Ukraine was known as the breadbasket of the Soviet Union and the policies of communism caused widespread hardship within the country, leading eventually to a famine that decimated the population. At the time of his birth, the effects of the famine were still widely felt and his early childhood was influenced by the deprivation, causing the Ukraine to be the subject of sustained bombing raids. In addition to the external hardships, Andre is believed to have suffered from hydrocephalus, also known as water on the brain at birth, which caused him genital urinary tract problems later in life, including bedwetting into his late adolescence and later the inability to sustain an erection, although he was able to ejaculate. Painfully shy as a result of this, his only sexual experience during adolescence occurred at age 15, when he is reported to have overpowered a young girl, ejaculating immediately during the brief struggle, for which he received even more ridicule. This humiliation colored all future sexual experiences and cemented his association of sex with violence. On December 22, 1978, Andre killed his first documented victim, nine-year-old Lena, who was lured into an abandoned shed where Andre tried to rape her. Trying to control the struggling child, he slashed her with a knife, ejaculating whilst doing so, confirming his psychological connection between violent death and sexual gratification that went on to typify all future attacks. An eyewitness had seen Andre with the victim shortly before her disappearance, but his wife provided him with a cast iron alibi that enabled him to evade any further police attention. Perhaps as a result of Andre's close brush with the law, there were no more documented victims for the next three years. On September 3, 1981, 17-year-old Larissa became his next victim. She was strangled, stabbed, and gagged with earthen leaves to prevent her from crying out. The brutal force afforded Andre his sexual release and he began to develop a pattern of attack that saw him focusing on young runaways of both sexes, whom he befriended at train stations and bus stops before luring them into nearby forest areas where he would attack them, attempt rape, and use his knife as a penis substitute to mutilate them. In a number of cases, he ate the sexual organs or removed other body parts such as the tips of their noses or tongues. In the earliest cases, the common pattern was to inflict damage to the eye area, slashing across the sockets and removing the eyeballs in many cases, an act which he later attributed to a belief that his victims kept an imprint of his face in their eyes, even after death. So when he was 15, he had his first sexual experience and did it not, not go yeah, It didn't go well. Um, no. He decided that overpowering a girl and trying to like force her was the way to go. But that didn't work out, and yeah, which just is interesting. And he immediately came during the struggle. Yeah, which then I think what everyone believes is that what kind of like led on to the rest. Yeah, um, because he was like, oh, this is that's the only what he way. associated it with. Yeah, yeah he's so like, then he's like, this well, is the only way I can. Yeah. Get off. Let yeah. loose. Yeah. Um, so then his first victim was a nine-year-old. He lured her into a shed. And when she, like, tried to escape, he slit her throat. Mm -hmm. And that, like, violence... He... Ejaculated. Ejaculated. <laughs> I don't know why. You're, not, you're like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ejaculated um, while he was... While the struggle was happening. Yeah, so I think... Probably then with that, too, he was like, oh. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, especially since it was his first yeah. victim. Like, it, since it worked, what he had hoped would work, I'm assuming. He's like, oh. Yeah. This is the way I got to do it. So then you skip Suspicious. a few years. And then he t attacks another girl, 17-year-old. Um, and it kind of escalates. Yeah, it definitely escalates. It started off, like, very minimal, like, caught her throat the first girl more on accident i think because she was like trying to get Struggle. away and it was like a last ditch effort but this one he he knew what he was gonna do like yeah. he knew so he yeah. strangled her stabbed her and gagged her um and that became his thing he would yeah. use his knife um to mute, Mutil mutilate them like instead yeah. of like actually doing the deed like with them he would use the end of his knife to yeah. to replicate that yeah it was definitely a few screws loose yeah 
An investigation was put together after a number of bodies were found that had the same MO. Progress was slow, especially when not all of the victims' bodies had been discovered, so the true body count was unknown to the police. With each body, the forensic evidence mounted, and police were convinced that the killer had the blood type AB as evidenced by the semen samples collected from a number of crime scenes. Samples of identical gray hair were also retrieved. When a further 15 victims were added during the course of 1984, police efforts were increased drastically and they mounted massive surveillance operations that canvassed most local transport hubs. Andre was arrested for behaving suspiciously at a bus station at this time, but again avoided suspicion on the murder charges as his blood type did not match the suspect profile, but he was in prison for three months for a number of minor outstanding offenses. What was not realized at this time was that his actual blood type, type A, was different from the type found on his other bodily fluids, type AB, as he was a member of a minority group known as non-secretors, whose blood type cannot be inferred by anything other than a blood sample. As police only had a sample of semen and not blood from the crime scenes, he was able to escape suspicion of murder. Following his release, Andre found work as a traveling buyer for a train company and managed to keep a low profile until August 1985, when he murdered two women in two separate incidents. At around the same time as these murders, Burakov, a specialist forensic analyst, was frustrated at the lack of positive progress and engaged the help of a psychiatrist who refined the profile of the killer, describing him as a necrosadist, or someone who achieves sexual gratification from the suffering and death of others. Coinciding with the attempt to understand the mind of the killer, attacks seemed to dry up and police suspected that the target might have stopped killing, been incarcerated for other crimes, or died. However, early in 1988, Andre again resumed his killings and victims were no longer taken from local public transportation outlets as police surveillance of these areas continued. Over the next two years, the body count increased by a further of 19 victims and it appeared that the killer was taking increasing risks, focusing primarily on young boys and often killing in public places where the risk of detection was far higher. He evaded capture narrowly on a couple of occasions, but on November 6, 1990, fresh from killing his final victim, his suspicious behavior was noted by patrolling policemen at the station nearby and his details were taken. His name was linked to the previous arrest in 1984 and he was placed under surveillance. So Andre just gets more interesting. Yeah, he's getting ballsier and ballsier. But not even that, like even the things that he has going on, on. are crazy. So he has this condition is that what you would call or, it? He's part of like this group called non secretors, basically where his yeah. blood type and like his semen type they're are, not the same. They're not the same. So like his blood type is what? A B and then his other bodily fluids are A. No. Well it says his Actual blood type is type oh. A. Okay, so his blood type is type A. Yes. His everything else, everything else is, is AB, AB, which makes it very, very hard to capture somebody, especially like in this scenario because he's um, having a sexual release mm -hmm. at these places. So all of the DNA that they're finding is AB, but then if they arrest him and mm -hmm. take his blood, blood it's, it's A. Type A. Dude. It's wild. Um, but then, back to what you were saying, he's getting ballsier, so now he's starting to kill out in the like, like, public areas. Oh, yeah, he's like going out in public and like, he's not like being so discreet about like luring a victim, like he's just like... He's just going for it. And then like when he's killing, like nobody might be like around or yeah. anything, but it's like more of like a public place, not like deep in a forest oh, yeah. or like in a shed, it's like... A it's, public place. It's probably because like the adrenaline, I would think. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, because a lot of people think that, or feel like, oh, it's like risky. It's like more yeah. exciting. So that could be. Feels like if you have, if like you have adrenaline, you feel like you can get away with anything. Yeah. Andre was arrested on November 20th, 1990, following more suspicious behavior, but he refused at first to confess to any of the killings. Burakov decided to allow the psychiatrist who had prepared the original profile to talk to Andre under the guise of trying to understand the mind of the killer from scientific context. Andre, clearly flattered by the approach, opened up to the psychiatrist providing extensive details of all his killings and even leading police to the site of bodies previously undiscovered. 
He claimed to have taken the lives of 56 victims, although only 53 of those could be independently verified. The figure was far in excess of the 36 cases that the police had initially attributed to their serial killer. Having been declared sane and fit to stand trial, Andre went to court on April 14, 1992, and throughout the trial he was held in an iron cage designed to keep him apart from the relatives of his many victims. Referred to in the media as the maniac, his behavior in court ranged from bored to manic. Referred to in the media as the maniac, his behavior in court ranged from bored to manic, singing and talking gibberish. At one point, he was even reported as having dropped his trousers, waving his genitals at an assembled crowd. The judge appeared less than impartial, often overruling Andre's defense lawyer, and it was clear that his guilt was a foregone conclusion. The trial lasted until August, and surprisingly, given the judge's bias, the verdict was not enough until two months later on October 15, 1990, when Andre was found guilty on 52 of the 53 murder charges and sentenced to death for each of the murders. On January 4, 1994, the Russian president at the time refused a last-ditch appeal for clemency. On February 14, Andre was taken to a soundproof room in prison and executed by a single gunshot behind the right ear. And they had to, like, flatter him. Pretty much, like work up his ego basically yeah he claimed that he killed 56 victims mm -hmm. um but they could only like verify like 53 ish yep you so, know so but who knows there could have even been more than 56 like if oh he, i definitely think there's more than 56 victims yeah. you know what he's I mean? like, probably you know forgetting some because yeah. or even like, like if he has a big ego he could just be lying you know what i mean like just whatever yeah. but um but yeah the trial was really interesting it, you guys saw some of the videos but basically like he is brought like in a normal courtroom there's not a cage mm -hmm, they no. bring him in and there's like these metal bars all around where he's sitting he's not allowed out of it but it's not for the crowd's protection it's, it's for, for his. his because all the family members not all the family members but a ton of family members from the victims came and sat in court and they're like they like livid. wanted to yeah they're trying to like, get him. through the security to get to him and he finally got caught and yeah he got caught the only way to get him to talk was to flatter the crap out of him which happens to a lot of like a narcissist yeah, yeah. what a strange man very strange like you guys saw the all the pictures of him and the picture on the thumbnail like he's definitely a, a character strange, strange guy like when i first saw his first picture i was a little bit scared of him to be honest with you i was like but my first thing was where are his teeth yeah, yeah I was he like, looks like a large baby, <laughs> which like not to be mean, but like that's what he looked like. And I was like, he looks psychotic. But oh, then yeah. Reading the script, like, like it so doesn't. The picture that Cassie has for the thumbnail, like looking at him, like the, he has dead eyes. Yeah. And it looks like he's so doesn't he like the way he looks in the thumbnail, like not to judge a book by its cover, but he looks, <laughs> looks like a psychopath. And then yeah. we read this, and it's like not. It's not the same as what I thought it was going to be. Yeah. I thought he was going to be, like, f far off the deep end, like, weird. We hope you guys liked this video about Andre Chikatilo. If you did, make sure you leave a like and you subscribe because it helps us know if you enjoyed our content or not. If you want to see other mm -hmm. things, let us know down below what you want to see. If you have any ideas for us, we would love to do them. Mm -hmm. And if you want to see more videos like him, make sure you click on this video right here so you can. We will see you guys next week. Peace.